In this video, we're gonna take a look at the synthesis of aspirin, how to purify it, as well as some of its properties. So let's start by the synthesis of aspirin, which is considered to be an addition elimination type of a reaction. So we take our starting product, salicylic acid, and we react it with acetic anhydride. So acetic anhydride is basically this sort of double ester type of shape. And essentially what's happening here is just the red side, maybe let's erase this so we can see that better. So just the uh, carboxyl here with the CH3 group is going to join onto this oxygen here and the hydrogen gets kicked off onto that oxygen there. So it's gonna form our products acetyl salicylic acid and our other product when you add an H to this oxygen makes acetic acid. Um, if we go by the proper IUPAC names of things for salicylic acid, it's 2-hydroxy benzoic acid. Um, this anhydride is ethanoic anhydride. And then we create aspirin and we create ethanoic acid. An interesting property of aspirin is that it's not soluble in water. And so the rest of these things are soluble in water. And so when we do this reaction, it's going to form a white precipitate that we can filter out and then remove from the rest of the components of the reaction. So in order to purify aspirin, when we create aspirin, uh, we actually get a pretty crude sample. It contains lots of impurities and has to be purified. And we use a technique called recrystallization with hot ethanol. And so the principle of this is that the solubility of a compound is going to increase in solvent with temperature. And as the solution cools, crystals are going to form and grow. And molecules in a crystal are going to have greater affinity for molecules of the same kind than for impurities. So what we do is we take our cold sample, and you can see a whole bunch of impurities here with different colors. The white is the aspirin, and the other colors are impurities. We heat it up, and then we allow it to cool back down again. And this recrystallization means that molecules in the crystal are going to have greater affinity for itself than for the impurities. So they should settle out and the impurities then would stay in the solution. And this is done multiple rounds in order to create as pure of a sample of aspirin as we possibly can. To determine the purity of aspirin, uh, we could do it by chromatography or we could do it by measuring the melting point. And the melting point's really easy because a pure substance is going to have a well-defined melting point, whereas impurities within there will lower the melting point and increase the range. So if we had pure aspirin, we would expect the melting point to between, be between 138 and 140 degrees Celsius, if there were impurities, it would be lower than this, and it'd be a much broader range. So maybe it'd be 130 to 135 or something like that. Now, we can also look at infrared spectrum of aspirin because it does have a very characteristic um, kind of pattern that shows up here. In terms of its structure, we do get a very broad OH stretch, and that's the OH from the carboxyl group. And so this is a really, really car uh, characteristic of this carboxyl carboxylic acid portion of the compound. We also get two characteristic peaks here in the C double bond O region, and one is due to the presence of the ester, and the other is due to the presence of the carboxylic acid. So it's a great way to be able to recognize that an infrared spectrum is of aspirin. Now, as I said, aspirin is insoluble, pretty much completely insoluble in water. And so that means its bioavailability is going to be pretty limited because in order for it to work and go to pain sites within our body, it has to be soluble within our bloodstream to go to the site of injury. So in order to make it more soluble, uh, the carboxylic acid group can be made into an ionic salt 
by reacting it with a strong base such as sodium hydroxide to form the soluble salt of it. So in this reaction, the carboxylic acid reacting with part of the aspirin reacting with sodium hydroxide is going to create a salt here. So essentially, hydrogen comes off, leaves the oxygen with a negative charge here, and then that forms an ionic bond with the sodium ion. And then your other product left over is water. So this is way more soluble, which means it's going to be way more effective as a medication to take. And this happens with a lot of drugs, actually. So um, a lot of drugs, when they're made, are not very soluble in water. And so to make them more soluble, you react them with a strong base, as we saw with aspirin, or something like Prozac, which is also called uh, this big long name here, uh, is is reacted with a strong acid like hydrochloric acid. Um, and so within this compound here, this secondary amine group is going to get rid of um, essentially one of its hydrogens. So the nitrogen atom in the secondary amine is donating its non-bonding pair to the hydrogen ion. And so it's going to form and there's actually one too many hydrogens here. It's going to form this NH plus Cl minus um, ion. And this, again, is a lot more soluble uh, than the secondary amine group is. So that is how we make aspirin, how we purify it, as well as how some of its properties look like. That's it then for this video. We'll see you in the next one.